I am Angel Verindio and today I will be presenting our paper entitled Optimization of the Hydrolysis Reaction of Kapok Polyacrylon Hydro Nanocomposite for the adsorption of for the adsorption of lead and chromium ions in a phase. So um, globally it has been found that 80% of the uh, wastewater does not undergo treatment. Uh, on a local scale, data gathered by the Asian Development Bank shows that only 10% of the wastewater present in the Philippines undergoes treatment. Um, the Philippines, with some of its largest industries, focus on automotive, ammunition, textile, and battery, produces lead and chromium as some of its primary wastewater effluents. And the presence of these heavy metals poses a threat to the environment and human health. For example, in 2013, uh, a study found that 99.2% of these burden found in toxic waste sites from India, Indonesia, and the Philippines um, were attributed to the presence of heavy metals such as lead and chromium. Um, with that being said, it is important to recognize that there is a need for wastewater to undergo necessary treatments prior its release to the environment. Um, and currently, there are different methods used for the treatment of wastewater, such as electrochemical treatment, chemical precipitation, and adsorption. And among these methods, adsorption is the most advantageous due to its simplicity, high efficiency, and cost effectiveness. Activated carbon is, uh, is the most widely used adsorbent due to its high adsorption capacity. However, the production of activated carbon is energy intensive and a little bit costly. Therefore, there is an increased interest in exploring cheaper yet effective alternative for the treatment of wastewater. And one of this is the use of biosorbent, which is for this study made out of kapok. Kapok is a natural plant fiber exhibiting low density, good buoyancy, increased hollowness, and outstanding hydrophobicity. Um, Surface modification could be done to uh, make it more hydrophilic, thus making it more amenable for adsorption. And related studies have shown that the deposition of polyacrylonitrile to the surface of the kapok have allowed the fibers to absorb gold and copper particles. However, for lead ions, the adsorption capacity was relatively low. So for that, our study So for that, our study hydrolyzed the kapok pan fibers using sodium hydroxide. Uh, preliminary trials have shown that the hydrolysis has caused the fiber to be brittle. Therefore, careful control of hydrolysis conditions must be performed in order not to damage the fibers. In our study, we performed our optimization using response surface methodology combined with a box banking design and our experimental setups can be found in the table. The parameters that we vary are temperature, which ranges from 45 to 65 degrees Celsius, and NaOH concentration, which ranges from 3% to 7%, and lastly, contact time, which ranges from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. So, the results of our study showed that the hydrolysis of the fibers cause intense variation on the surface of the kapok pan. High degree of hydrolysis has caused the most intense variation which could be attributed to the brittleness that we have observed in our uh, earlier trials. Uh, to further characterize the morphology of the fiber, we also subjected them to FDIR analysis and we found that during hydrolysis, the peaks associated with the nitrile groups of pan dampens as we increase the degree of hydrolysis. Um, the hydrolysis of the nitrile groups of pan is what allowed the adsorption of more metal ions. We also checked for the effects of pH on the adsorption behavior of lead, and we found that at lower pH, or at pH lower than 2, the heavy metal ions uh, experience competitive adsorption against the proton or H plus ions found in the acidic environment. For pH 2 to 5, um, adsorption increases as pH increases due to the functional groups being more ionized to break apart the complexes to give rise to increased adsorption. 
And lastly, for pH greater than 6, um, lead absorption is lower due to the precipitation of lead ions in basic environments. And since the maximum absorption was observed at pH 6, we performed all subsequent experiments in pH 6. So again, our optimization was uh, performed using response surface methodology with a box banking design. And the table shows our highest experimental absorption value of fame, which is from run 7, which has 75.84, and our lowest value, which is 54.30 from run 13. The quadratic equation used to predict the optimum point was generated from the experimental design. And the figure on the left is the normal probability plot of residuals. This suggests that the model closely follows experimental data and could be highly significant. From ANOVA, it can be seen that the response surface quadratic model has a p-value of 0 0.0191 which indicates that the model is indeed significant with an R-squared value of 0.9317. Design Expert was also used to produce the contour plot representation of the equation for optimization of time, temperature, and concentration. And these are the results. So to achieve an optimum value of absorption, which is 73.67, temperature should be 55.28 degrees Celsius, NaOH concentration should be 3.96 weight percent, and contact time should be 52.04 minutes. So after the statistical analysis, we mass produced the hydrolyzed copal fiber using the optimized parameter, and then we went to check its absorption uh, properties. So first is we check the effect of adsorbent dosage. Um, we found that generally adsorption capacity increases with um, higher adsorbent dose. Um, higher, uh, higher dosage of adsorbent usually means more adsorption sites and functional groups available. However, the decrease in capacity that we observe in lead could be due to the overlapping and partial aggregation of the adsorption sites, which would result to lower surface area. Uh, for chromium, the point of saturation was not reached as the adsorption capacity were relatively low. Next is we also checked the effect of initial concentration on adsorption and we found that maximum adsorption for lead was found at 100 ppm and maximum adsorption was found 100, at 150 ppm for chromium. Um, further increase in the concentration resulted to minimal or no increase in adsorption capacity. Um, these results were also plotted against the Langmuir isotherm, Langmuir and Freundlich isotherm, and found that both metals follow the Langmuir isotherm models, which suggests that the adsorption is governed by homogeneous monolayer adsorption. Next, we also uh, check for the effect of contact time, and we observe that there is a very sharp um, intake of both heavy metals at the beginning of the adsorption process. However, after reaching the peak adsorption capacity, minimal or no increase was observed in the succeeding hours. This is due to the saturation of metal ions on the surface of the fiber. Uh, we also performed kinetic modeling for both metals and found that lead adsorption showed a better fit on the adsorption um, we found that lead adsorption showed a better fit for the pseudo-second order, which suggests that um, the adsorption of lead was chemically controlled. Uh, chromium, on the other hand, resembled more that of a physical adsorption. Um, its adsorption varies with the changes in particle size and film thickness. So lastly, the adsorption capacity of the optimized fiber was compared to other existing adsorbents. So in comparison, with the kapok fan with no surface modification, uh, hydrolysis of the kapok fan, uh, fan fibers has allowed more than 100% increase in the absorption of lead, and it has also allowed the absorption of chromium ions, which wasn't observed in the non-hydrolyzed kapok fan. Uh, the hydrolyzed kapok fan showed promising values in the absorption of both metals. Uh, this suggests that the hydrolysis was indeed effective in improving the absorption capacity of kapok fan. So to conclude, um, the, the hydrolysis was effective in improving the absorption capacity of the fibers, and further studies which aims at studying the 
uh, mechanical property and the absorption behavior of other heavy metals could be beneficial for the further development of this material. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Merido. Our next finalist of China.